When I look back at this past season, only one thing comes to mind. The NFL has been shit. Terrible football all around, with terrible execution, terrible discipline, terrible technique, and a bunch of faux intelligent offenses that overthink every goddamn thing. When you speak of the worst offensive coordinator in the league, at least ten names will be mentioned. Overall, there are roughly five teams that are any good, while the rest make FTX seem legitimate. That's why this January is probably gonna be pretty fucky. Let's go over the so-called contenders. I remember when the Dolphins were a Super Bowl contender. With that high-flying offense, they felt like they couldn't be stopped. And it would be the case if Tua didn't get all but killed on the field. When you suffer three concussions in about three months, it ain't good. It's even worse when your backup QB is made of non-tempered glass. Combine it all with a suspect defense and a free fall that nearly cost them a playoff berth entirely, you get a team that's about to be a Japanese delicacy. It's quite clear this team's useless without Tonga Bailoa. His haters may prance and say he's garbage, but look at Miami's offense without him. It's terrible. Kind of ironic in a way. The last time they made it to the dance, the Dolphins were without their starting QB. The same will happen here. Take your painful loss like a man and move on. Is it really a good thing that they're here? Watching these boys flail around is like waiting for our time to die. Turning into their games over the year has shown a team cutting themselves at the hip by their own doing. A defense that suddenly bends at will late in games. A group that blows multi-score leads like their Tony Montana on a coke mound. Greg Roman fiddles while his offense burns for two months. Lamar has been banged up, and we have no idea if he's even going to be healthy enough to go at full strength. Oh boy, either imitation Lamar or Anthony Brown. I'm so scared. It's a shame, too, the defense has really come on strong, but it hasn't changed my mind. I don't trust them. I refuse to. Not with this offense in their current form. Good luck with Lamar. He may have played his last game as a Raven. Baltimore doesn't want to pay him what he wants. If they do, they're paying a shitload to a guy who's injury-prone and can't perform in the playoffs. You're in trouble with any decision you make, boys. Tick, tick, Carbon Roman. The sands in the hourglass are running out. I find it weird to say that the Chargers somehow got lucky in a given season. It usually results in hilariously predictable failures. Not this season. Perhaps when you play opponents that are either pig shit or fail to take advantage of the many softballs you throw them, you too can gain a wildcard berth. A team injured to hell and carrying a shit coordinator with an endless smattering of curl routes and checkdowns to Austin Eckler. Justin Herbert is pretty much the only thing keeping this team relevant. And he's been limited by the horrors of Lombardi's disease. When you have to carry a coach as overmatched as Brandon Staley, constantly using iffy execution to support an analytical dogma, you'd also be exhausted. You'll say the defense is coming around and they're on a winning streak. Sure, but their opponents have been insanely weak. Any non-shit team would take advantage. Forgive me if I'm not optimistic. So what the hell is this team gonna be? They have potential, but it keeps getting restrained for a litany of reasons. Injuries keep wrecking them. It'd be very on brand to somehow lose in heartbreaking self-inflicted fashion. What this Jacksonville year merely reinforces is how utterly terrible Urban Meyer was as a coach. You could have had a wooden plank become the head coach of this team and they still would have shown massive improvement. I'm not a Doug Peterson fan, but he's exactly what the Jags needed to right the ship. A calming, stable presence. Someone that'll actually allow players to develop. A truly novel concept indeed. It's worked wonders for Trevor Lawrence who's blossomed into a stud all his own over the year. It's also worked wonders for that defense, finally coming together to be one of the best units since Saxonville. Yes, even Trayvon Walker, the first overall pick no one talks about. They may not be anywhere near ready to compete for a Super Bowl. They're still a highly raw work in progress. But winning a division title no one wanted to win is always a sight for sore eyes. Starting a year two and six, then rattling off five straight wins and seven of nine is a beautiful thing, and proof of their future upside. This team needed hope, and they got it. That's all Duvall wanted. These were fans donning clown outfits this time last year, and now they clowned a rival team. Playoffs be damned, that's already a victory they'll cherish forever. <coughs> Running it back is one of the hardest things for a Super Bowl contender to do. And early on, it was looking like the Bengals were dealing with a hangover of their own. They were simply meh. Watching Joe Burrow continue to die behind an offensive line failing to mesh and Zach Taylor trying to outgenius himself on the back of a kid's menu maze was painful. Even then, when there is talent, there was a way to overcome early adversity. It was looking like a struggle turned into a thriving enterprise. Burrow smoking the opposition with throws to Chase and Higgins. The offensive line finally starting to come into its own... somewhat. 
and the defense still as underrated as ever. A well-rounded unit that can only be stopped by themselves if we're being honest, even if Baltimore looks ripe for the kill. And since he's a very worthy adversary, they cannot look ahead. Too many teams have tripped over themselves in the process. If the Bengals aren't careful, they'll become just another statistic. It's happened to much better units in the past, even ones they beat on their Super Bowl run. It's been a pretty fucky season for Buffalo, and that's putting things lightly. A year that's seen them lose countless defensive leaders to season-ending injuries. One where massive snowstorms and other weather phenomena thwarted their travel plans at every turn. One where a brother-in-arms was nearly taken away from them by a routine hit. Yet despite all of these obstacles, despite every situation that would kill other teams, it's only made them stronger. Their bond has never been firmer than it is now. Their high-flying offense. That of Josh Allen's dazzling spirals to Stefan Diggs's amazing catches to a chorus of outstanding talents are ready to extract vengeance for generations of ancestors past. With that defense, oozing with game-changing abilities, ready to turn their opposition into beef on Weck, the time is now. This is their best shot of being able to make it back to the big game. Albeit with an asterisk. They'll be undermanned on defense without Von Miller, who they needed on this trip. Micah Hyde should be back, but Buffalo has faced adversity before. And they'll do anything to overcome it. Anything to avoid the horrible talisman that they still rue to this day. The coin. And he thinks that Kansas City's demise may have been exaggerated. Without Tyreek Hill, we thought they'd take a step back. Chiefs would be good, but nothing spectacular. Mahomes can only do so much. However, we fail to remember. They only need 13 seconds to turn a dire situation around. I know overplay, but KC's supposed to decline and fall were used as fuel for their engines. With that offense and new blood being infused into this machine, they're still one of the elite teams in the league. These are the standard Chiefs. Plenty of high-flying shootouts. Mostly because the team's secondary is still insanely suspect and curls up into a ball at the first sign of resistance. In that case, they'll whip out the magic tricks. All they need are some cheap ones you'd see on a street corner. Try to find the missing card and before you know it, your life savings is gone. Probably thanks to their offense. It will satiate Andy Reid in securing the finest cheeseburger known to man. And it'll be delicious. The only way you can stop it is by bringing nuclear missiles to a gunfight. It's very rare that a team ends up getting better after trading their franchise quarterback. We laughed at Pete Carroll for believing this team was significantly better than advertised. We laughed at them for starting Geno Smith full-time. We laughed when they spat in our faces. Then they started playing. We were forced to eat shit. Pete Carroll and John Schneider have been safe from the slow cooker with an outstanding season. Geno magically turning into Rich Gannon and getting himself paid in a few months being blessed with what is probably the best draft class since the 2017 Saints. It's true they have fallen off hard over the past two months, particularly Geno. And their defense can't stop the run, but they've earned the right to get their asses kicked by San Fran. Oh, they accomplished the tanking part as well. Denver did it for them. They have a top five pick! House money? They all but won the goddamn Powerball. They're laughing all the way to the bank. Right after they take their licks in Santa Clara, of course. This Giants team has proven to us all a fact. You can indeed make the playoffs without anything resembling talent. When you have a quarterback who isn't forced to do much, throwing to receivers that can't catch, and an offensive line as consistent as ocean waves, being bogged down in cap hell by Dave Gettleman's personal hellscape, coming off a year where the team was slowly decapitated by key injuries, the fact that they made it this far either proves the power of good coaching or how terrible the league was in general. Probably more to do with Saquon Barkley finally being able to stay healthy enough to show off his transcendent talents. He's been carrying this offense on his back, and where he goes, the G-men go with him. There's no real pressure to do anything. This year has no expectations besides basking in the warmth. Where they go from here? Who knows? But the time has come to embrace their destiny. Hopefully without the half decade of darkness afterwards. How about them, Cowboys? Left for dead in week one, they somehow survived an injury to Dak to blossom into a legit contender. Much to the chagrin of everyone not in Dallas. Normally, a team as strong as they are would be division winners, and there'd be at least a hundred shots of Jerry Boy and his owner sweet in the TV broadcast. However, this is not a normal year. Philadelphia ran the table for the first half of the season. This will expose every crack in their foundation. Mainly Dak, leader in direct TV commercials and interceptions on the season. Not to mention that every loss they've had this year has been on the road. They will overcome such issues with Micah Parsons screaming down the edge to kill opposing quarterbacks. 
on paper should be fine otherwise. Oozing with talent at the skill positions, very strong offensive line, star power that makes for good spank bank material, but they're still looking behind their shoulder at external threats. Dallas should be very careful moving forward. If they fail, there will be casualties. Jerry Jones isn't just going to send Micah screaming down the edge to kill countless servants of McCarthyism. He's going to send their limbs to the four corners of the earth. If you want concrete proof that this year of football was full of shit, look no further than the box. It's not even that I have a vendetta or that they're frauds. This team sucks. Straight up horrible. Nothing makes me hornier than watching inept coaching and shitty play calling. Nothing revs my engine like inconsistent quarterbacking with a non-existent running game featuring suspect wide receivers and an offensive line that can't block for shit. I love nothing more than seeing the same goddamn penalties ending the same goddamn drives over and over again. I love seeing a defense be forced to carry a franchise like Atlas carries the earth. It's a punishment I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. In a real timeline, this team would be 6-11 and and we watch someone else. But we can't have that. Great, you made it here because the Saints collapsed and Grady Jarrett touched Tom Brady. Whoop-dee-doo. Now we have to hear the media wax poetic because Brady was able to drag this team to victory against shitty franchises that all but stopped trying. So much dick riding that he may as well own real estate on them. The bullshit just doesn't end. Which means they're somehow beating Dallas in the wildcard round. I knew that getting rid of Mike Zimmer was the best move of the offseason, but like this? Something smells really rotten in the state of Denmark. And it ain't Shakespearean intrigue. All you have to do is look at their negative point differential. With that record, it reeks of insane fraudulence. Constantly escaping their own undoings by means of Justin Jefferson becoming God. Anything to overcome one of the worst defenses and turnover ratios in the NFL today. Last year, they somehow lost games they should have won. This time, the Uno Reverse card was used to incredible effect. And it's mostly due to a combination of no Mike Zimmer and high-end talent. I'll give them credit for an outstanding year, but they're shooting way above their pay grade. Know how I know this? Watch them against legit contenders. They get fucking destroyed against most of them. Almost as if they didn't know how to play football some weeks. This is the kind of group that's going to walk into a match and get bitch slapped for 60 minutes. In due time, the Minneapolis Miracle will become the Minneapolis Massacre. I just don't know if it'll be now or later. It was an incredibly bold move at the time. A 3-4 and four with a massive quarterback conundrum, the Niners went all in. They needed a great weapon to complete their offense. And they got it with Christian McCaffrey. Did it work? I mean, if a 10-game winning streak to win the year says anything, I think it may have worked out in their favor. Just a hunch, but with their incredible offensive machine and one of the best defenses in football, with Nick Bosa and Fred Warner playing like Defensive Player of the Year candidates, they might be favorites to make it out of the grind for a Super Bowl. Do you know the ironic thing? Somehow losing bodies to injury made them stronger. The starter was supposed to be Trey Lance. He got knocked out in week three. The backup option was Jimmy G. He was taken down by the injury gods as well. Enter the unsung hero. A so-called irrelevant player who thrusts his brass balls into death-defying situations. Big Cock Brock. A legend without compare blessed with composure rivaling the most grizzled veteran. If he can limit his mistakes on the big stage, the Niners will go far. They have everything they need to make a deep run. The question is, will it materialize? Remember when everyone and their mother wanted Howie Roseman fired from his position two years ago? Seems insane to think, but there was some very real steam to it back then. So many questionable moves and draft decisions covered up a dark secret. Roseman is an ardent scholar of the Necronomicon. With his black magic, he was able to turn the fortunes of Philly near overnight. Yes, we will gladly take a premium wide receiver in A.J. Brown for a pittance. Yes, the team defense will be forged from the greatness of both in-house and free agent talent. Yes, Jalen Hurts will make an incredible leap to emerge as an elite QB. Behind that offensive line, he will have all the time he wants. An all-in push with an endless wave of talent, ring chasers, hired guns, whatever they desire. With Hurts on a rookie deal, this is the best chance the Eagles will have at securing another ring. I just hope that end of year skid was just a fluke. You don't want your division rivals laughing at you. Again. These playoffs should be pretty predictable to guess, right? Right? Oh, knowing how this season's gone, I'm probably gonna ruin everything anyway. Let's begin the jinxing. I'll save you from the tension. I'm rolling with Buffalo versus San Francisco in the Super Bowl. 
These teams have both the momentum and the plot lines the NFL desperately needs to lure the eyeballs in to watch such a spectacle. That's always a good thing. Knowing our luck, it'll be Tampa Bay, Kansas City again. Mostly because the football gods want us to suffer. They have a fetish for it. We need someone, San Francisco, to get to the quarterback here. Prescott takes off running the football. Whoa, I don't think this is going to work out. It will. They'll be on the clock. This they were planned for. It's Four. down, down. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the official gets in the way. The game's oh over. Gosh. The game is over.